In this video, we are going to deploy an API application as Docker containers on a cloud. I'll be using a Docker machine to provision the application server and for the cloud host we'll be using DigitalOcean. There are two reasons I chose this for the video. One is that Docker machine has a driver for DigitalOcean and the second is that it is relatively cheaper than other providers out there. Also I'll be using canister.io as the Docker registry for our application image. The reason I chose canister is because it allows up to 20 free repositories which is kind of good to start with. Now here is what we are going to go through in this video start with preparing the application for the cloud deployment create a repository for the application's docker image and push the image in there define compose file for the new environment provision a vm or a droplet on a digital ocean cloud using docker machine and then finally deploy the application and test okay let's get started this is the application code for blog api an api only application in rails that i wrote in episode 4 let's go ahead and run this application on local on docker and it failed the issue here is the PID file which wasn't cleared the last time when the service was stopped. So we can change the way service starts up or maybe clear the PID file before starting up Rails. So on local the PID file is on the Docker host. So let's go ahead and delete that file and run Rails again. The application is running now. Let's go to the REST client and load the posts API and it responds with a JSON that has a bunch of blog posts. Now let's prepare the application for deployment. I want to change the way we define the command for Rails application image. Let's define a shell script inside a bin folder and name it as run app. We're going to be using this script as the command for the app service instead of the bundle exec Rails as in the command every time. I will paste in some code here. Basically when executed it will delete the pid file if there is one and it runs Rails server. Binds it to 0000 and port 3000. We also need to update the docker file. Add a new instruction in the docker file to expose port number 3000 explicitly and now set the command that is um, run the script using bin bash the executable is bin bash and the file path for the script that we just wrote will be slash rails app bin run app in the container now with that defined we can comment out or remove the command from the app in the docker compose yaml now let's stop the services build the app image once again using docker compose build that is complete. Now start the application up again. Reload the post API and it works. Now we need a repository for our application image. Let's create one for the application image on uh, canister.io. Log into canister.io. Create a new repository. Name it as um, blog API. Let's leave the description fields empty which is really optional. Submit this and we have a new repository created. Back to the terminal window. I will use docker command instead of docker compose to build and tag the image that is docker build minus t blog api and another tag for the repository on canister.io for now i'll tag this as the latest version but when you deal with deployment of different versions of the code you may tag differently let's list the images for blog api and we have two in there before we push the image to the repository we need to log into canister docker login to canister using the same username password as used for the portal okay that is successful now let's push the image docker push the tag that we just created for the canister repository this will take a few minutes depending on the size of the image it is complete now image has been pushed to the repository on canister.io and let's verify that reload the repository page on the canister and we have the new tag listed in there now let's define the compose file for the deployment i'd like to name this new environment we are going to deploy to as staging even though it will be a single node stack Let's create a copy of docker compose yaml and name it as docker compose staging.yaml. We can change all the database configs for the staging environment but I'll leave them as is. But remove the ports as we don't really need the MySQL being accessed externally or on the docker host machine. And in the app service, remove the commenter command. We don't really need that. And remove the volume as the application will now run off of the code bundle in the image. The image URL is the one from canister.io registry the one that we just pushed to. Let's also change the port on the deployed to be 3000 instead of 3002 because we don't really have anything running on 3000. Additionally, we need to add some environment specific configs to the staging environment. So the first one is Rails environment, Rails ENV. Set that to production. Now we could define a new environment for staging, but production will do. And the next is the secret key, which is defined in the config slash secrets.yaml. And for production, it expects it to be passed in an environment variable. This is not really useful for the API only application as cookie is not really used. 
but let's set something in there create a new secret using rails secret command and it generated one copy and paste in that for the secret key base value and last one is for the application logs set rails log to standard output with some value to make the application logs all go to standard output so that it is available as container logs that's about it now we have the compose file defined for a single node deployment of the application or for staging environment now let's spin off a droplet on digital ocean for our staging environment so we'll be using docker machine to provision one so we need an api access token for us to be able to provision droplet using docker machine so log into digitalocean.com let's generate a new api access token give it some name and this access token should have the right permission and submit now here we have a new access token copy the token and save it for later use before we create the droplet using docker machine let's create a directory for the docker machine configurations i'm going to create one at the root slash docker machine slash blog hyphen staging i'm going to make the current user as the owner for this directory now this comes handy if you have to create multiple nodes or machines for staging so all the configurations will go in one directory and set that directory to the environment variable machine storage path docker machine command when executed will look for the directory defined in this environment variable and if it is not defined it defaults to dot machines folder in users home directory so let's create the machine now docker machine create driver is digital ocean and the access token is the one that we just copied from the portal and give this machine a name and that will be blog staging now this will take a couple of minutes to create a droplet and uh, set up docker in there and it is complete now quick check list the machines and we have only one Let's take a quick look at the directory we created for the docker machine configurations. The config JSON for blog staging machine is where we can learn how it is all laid out. I'm not going to go into the details of the machine config JSON but that is something that you might want to take a look at. Now reload the droplets page on DigitalOcean portal and it has blog staging droplet listed in there. Verify the public address once, docker machine IP blog staging. Now let's have the docker client on my local point to the docker engine running on the blog staging node we just created on DigitalOcean. Verify that the docker host is now pointing to the blog staging and that looks good. Now let's deploy the services on blog staging node. And the command is docker compose up using the compose file that we created for staging which is docker compose staging yaml. It has started up, application is now running and let's test it. Try to load the posts API on REST client and the URL is HTTP and the IP address of the droplet colon 3000 slash posts. Well, it responded with a 500 internal service error. Let's take a look at the logs. Now here it is complaining about the missing table posts in the database. And that is because we did not run the migration. Let's run the migration. Docker compose app rails db migrate using the same compose file and remove option so that the container is destroyed as soon as this command is complete. Now let's also run the seed to populate some records for us to be able to test. And the command is docker compose run app rails db seed using the same compose file for the staging and with the remove option. That is done. Now run the application again and this time let this be running in a detached mode with the minus d option. Here we have both the services running on droplet. Now reload the posts API and it responds with some data. That's it. Our blog API application is deployed on staging environment as a single node stack on a digital ocean droplet. You can start, stop the services pointing your Docker host to the remote machine. Also, you can have that pull the updated application images for new deployments as needed. Now that the services are running in detached mode, if you want to take a look at the logs, you can use docker compose logs command for either API or database or for both. One important thing to note is that the docker compose staging yaml file that we created is something you don't want to keep in your application codebase. The environment specific application configuration such as database username, password or secret key or any sensitive configuration data that should be kept outside the code repo. Now that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.